Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Google Ads and Leads, How Your Business Benefits from New Updates and Local Service Ads. I'm really excited to be your host today. My name is Michelle and Steve is also here with me and he will be helping us out by answering any of your questions you have throughout the webinar. You can place your answers into the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can locate that right now and let us know where you're joining us from today. Today we have our Google Ads expert and Senior PPC Manager Carrie Phipps with us. She has a fantastic and informative presentation for you all today. So with that, I'm going to pass it on over to Carrie. Carrie, take it away. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this. This is me, just in case you wanted to put a face with that voice that uh, you're going to listen to for the next couple of minutes, hopefully uh, not too, too long, uh, but, but for a while and hopefully informative. Um, like Michelle said, my name is Carrie Phipps. Um, I consider myself a Google Ads champ. Um, I think a lot of people at my job and a lot of clients that I work with would consider me that too. A little brief snapshot into what that means uh, to be a Google Ads champ. I don't just sit in the dark room, dimly lit monitors and, and optimize campaigns, although that is a component of what I do. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy um, trying to connect um, businesses with the right traffic uh, to meet whatever their business goals are. Uh, so as you can see up in the top left corner, I was uh, selected for America's Next Top AdWords Champion. I take AdWords with me even when I travel. Uh, down in the bottom left corner, that's me hanging out at the America's Next Top AdWords Champion with one of my close connects at Google. And then uh, the Google Premier Partner badge, that's a badge that I earned while working with Surefire Local. And like Michelle said, we're going to be talking about how to reap the benefits uh, as a business owner of the updates or the evolution, if you would, uh, of what's coming down Google search. And really where to start is to think about how Google came to be. Larry Page co-founded uh, Google, and he is quoted as saying, the perfect search engine should understand exactly what you mean and give you back exactly what you need. That was almost 20 years ago. That was the premise that Google started. Uh, that right now is 18 years, I believe, since Google AdWords was formed. And this really follows two different points, right? There's one, the consumer-driven aspect of it. Um, what Meaning as a consumer, when I go to Google, I'm trying to utilize it to find something, to find information, to find a service, um, to validate something. Uh, but secondarily, for you guys, as business owners, as in the service industry or whatever industry you're in, you're trying to utilize Google in order to tap into that potential of lead generation. Google understands that. However, it doesn't deviate from this core of making sure that its search engine can understand exactly what you mean, however you choose to use it, whether it's on your mobile phone or with your voice or on a tablet or on a computer, and be able to give you exactly what you need or what you expect. And that can be hard and that takes a lot of uh, prediction, but that's where we see this evolution and these updates come along. And we wanna talk about what that means in terms of impact for you. So starting way back then, the one thing that is always changing and always evolving is consumer behavior. Partially fueled, and I'm gonna ask you guys to indulge me here and take off your small business owner hat, take off you know, your lead generation want hat and put on your consumer hat here. Consumer behavior is changing. And again, partly fueled by our rise in technology, our access, control and convenience, right? We're constantly connected. I, right now in front of me, I have a desktop computer. I have a lot laptop to my left. I have a phone on my desk and I have a tablet uh, somewhere else, probably in my bag, right? We're constantly connected either in with Wi-Fi or, um, to, you know, to 4G or whatever. We're always connected, right? So we have this control and convenience. We have options. We think we have options. We want to have options as consumers because we want to be informed and aware, we want to feel like we're making the best choice for us as consumers. And in order to do that, we want to use that control and convenience of being uh, having access to information 24 seven, we want to check a myriad of options quick, right? The other thing as consumers is we have higher expectations. Extraordinary is the new ordinary. And we're seeing this across all industries in terms of search volume. And all of these factors are modeling 
and helping evolve and helping grow the way consumer uh, behavior is changing. Add to that, there's a change or evolution from an advertising perspective for digital marketing. Now, I'm not gonna go into, you'll have to catch another webinar on this, about all the differences in pay-per-click and what that means and all of these different things that fall under the umbrella term of PPC. But I wanna talk about how evolution has fueled these new benefits for you as a business owner. One thing that's changed or has evolved is even the name. Google AdWords is now Google Ads. Right? It's reflective of evolution. When Google decided, and again, it's been Google Ads, previously AdWords, has been around for 18 years. When it decided to debut this year, a change from Google AdWords to Google Ads, and in addition, they announced three other, uh, two other consolidated name changes. It was reflective of Google's main driving goal to simplify and connect. And that's what I see as these updates for local service ads, what I see as the updates to benefits on Google ads that you guys as business owners are going to take advantage of. So even something as small as a business name change or product name change and a consolidation of logos, it is streamlining the process to reduce that friction and giving the consumer and even potential businesses that understanding that things need to evolve and things need to change in order to make sure that we're making those connections. Now, I understand that it can be daunting. I work in search engine marketing specifically. I'm an AdWords specialist, excuse me, a Google Ads specialist now. And I've been in this um, industry for over a decade. So I have seen a myriad of changes. I can remember when the search engine's result page, results page, excuse me, was just a straight column and the ads portion was highlighted with some grotesque like red color as the backdrop that indicated ads. And really now that's changed to being seamless. And I, I also understand that there's a lot of industry term, a lot of industry speak that goes on with search engine marketing that sometimes doesn't cut through to the core of what you need to know and understand as a business owner. So I'm going to try to help cut through some of that right now. Google Ads has several solutions that you can leverage as a business in order to advertise. Almost all of them are pay-per-click. Some of them are pay-per-view. Uh, that is not the movie service that some of us may be fond of. Uh, that more applies to uh, the YouTube platform. Some of them are um, cost per impression. Some of them are cost per lead. One of the solutions and the way that I, I encourage you all to think about Google and the solutions, specifically if your business objective is to generate leads, is to think about where I want to advertise. And if you've caught an a webinar with me before or if you're going to catch one come you know coming up uh, where I talk about what you should use as the foundation of driving your decisions what on how to advertise or getting started to advertise uh, with Google local service ads or Google ads use your business goals that's where you start that's ground zero so think of the the solutions in terms of where you would show your ad you have search under each option there's a myriad of ad formats so there's search, there's display, and then there's YouTube, right? Now, like I said previously, there is a myriad of options here. Things that from ad types to ad scheduling to bid adjustments, there are a lot of knobs and a lot of things that you can do to enhance your campaign, to optimize your campaign. But for lead generation, if you're like 99% of the clients I deal with, you really want to focus on search. That is where you want to concentrate your effort, especially if you're a small business and you don't know where to get started because there are so many solutions and so many different ad types and so many variables. Narrow yourself to search because search is where people are looking for you. That is when people use Google, either by with their voice or on their mobile, tablet, desktop, wherever, that's where people are coming and searching for you, right? Well, what are the options for you as a business owner on search? There are two very specific options that I wanna talk about today. Google local service ads, which you can see highlighted in green with the check mark, and then the blue area, which might look purple to some, uh, almost looks, uh, for those who've seen Avengers Affinity War, almost looks like the color of Thanos, if you ask me. That is not indicative of anything. Uh, but the blue highlights the Google ad space, space. Google ads, that blue space, is what we have seen for a number of years. 
that was formerly AdWords, now Google Ads. What Google is allowing on the search engine results page is twice the chance to generate a lead, right? With appearing in the Google local service ads and appearing in the Google ad section, right? First thing I wanna talk about is local services by Google. Like I had said earlier, Google's whole premise is to make itself the best search engine to understand what the consumer is looking for and connect them with what they need, right? Simplify and connect. Google understands that people utilize Google to come and find information or more specifically services that they can get done. They took this one to try to tackle how to reduce the consumer friction. They introduced local service ads. What that means, essentially, local service ads help consumers quickly and easily discover, right? So find, because it's at the top of the page, connect either by phone or by messaging, and hire, book it right there with complete confidence, right? And they tackle that in three ways. One instant result, compare professionals at a glance, connecting with the ones that you choose. And we're gonna get into the anatomy of what that ad looks like. But instant results, that uh, uh, if you search roofers in Dallas, you'll see what I'm talking about. You could look at plumbers in Fairfax, and um, that's another search you could do. But you can see that the local service ads are showing at the top of the page instantly, right? Ease and convenience. Everything you need to hire a professional, organized in one place. So again, taking that simplify and connect, what are the most compelling things, what are the most compelling bits of information for someone who's at the bottom of the funnel in order to pull that trigger, in order to turn into that lead? And then most importantly, and most uniquely, is the badge of trust. Pros, advertisers who have gone through this process of being pre-screened and have been approved to be backed by the Google guarantee um, and have a number of real customer reviews, the consumer feels a level of trust, understanding that this Google guarantee uh, is present, that if they hire this pro, they're getting that backing, the full weight of Google behind it. For a, for a professional like yourself, an advertiser, one, obviously, that Google backing, that Google says that, yep, this advertiser has passed all of our applications and they get to wear this almost as a badge of honor. Leads how pros want them, how you guys want them. They're direct calls, they're not clicks, right? Big difference from the Google Ads platform. You pay for leads only. This is not cost per click. This is not keyword bidding. This is pay for leads. Again, when we think about the need for Google to easily and effectively, from a consumer standpoint, deliver what the person is looking for when they search something in Google, so does Google have to try to answer the question to easily and effectively give a business owner who chooses to advertise on Google the lead that they are looking for, right? And obviously the ability to connect on the goal. As you can see, there's a mobile phone here. Local service ads are designed to be very prominent and easily, uh, in, they can, you can easily interact with them on mobile so that you are not putting any extra steps on the consumer to contact you for a potential business, for a potential service um, that, that you provide, right? Also, there's a personalized profile which has your hours, service types, reviews, et cetera, specific to Google local service. Again, putting the most relevant information, cutting through any type of marketing jargon and connecting simply advertisers and businesses, specific local businesses, pros, with those consumers that are ready to be leads, to turn into customers. I almost equate it to, it's like a combination of Google My Business. I hope that you guys as small business owners have Google My Business pages. Um, if you don't, I, I strongly recommend you, you get one that's considered, that's not part of paid media, that's not part of Google Ads, nor was it formerly part of Google AdWords, it's completely separate, but I strongly encourage it. Um, but in Google by business, you have a profile and you get to fill out information and add, um, flesh out information. And when I'm searching for a business, when I'm looking for specific details, I know I rely on the ease with which Google My Business presents that specific business's information. Such as the same here with Google local service ads and the way that it presents a pro's information, very plain and very easy to see and actually very familiar because it's a very similar view to Google My Business. So it's a combination of Google My Business, Google Ads, because it's giving you an opportunity to advertise easy and seamlessly to connect with people who are further down the funnel. And then it's a combination of something new with that Google Guarantee Badge, right? Putting the weight of the trust. So it's a combination of these 
three things, an evolution. Again, I keep coming back to the word. It's an evolution trying to meet the demand of one, again, what the consumer wants, because that is what drives the heart of Google. They are obsessed with the consumer journey. They are now equally as obsessed as making sure that businesses and advertisers are having a the same, if not similar journey for advertising on their platform and making sure that it's understandable. So you may be asking yourself, how does a customer find a pro? It's literally as easy as searching. So a customer searches, like I said, you could search Plumber in Fairfax, you could search Roofer in Dallas, you could search Locksmith in Philly, you could search um, Electrician in San Diego. Um, And when these searches happen, depending on where people are, one of thousands of search terms, now again, that you're not having to worry about bid on these search terms. This is Google leveraging its machine learning in order to recognize search patterns and search terms that are that indicate or signal that this consumer is potentially looking for a service, right? And these search terms, if they match, will trigger the ad. Everything from general HVAC to specific AC repair. That's in the the specific HVAC vertical. Ads are also triggered by location. So they're in specific markets. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that local service ads right now are currently available in specific verticals. So for specific services and are in specific locations and proximity, a person's searching, whether it's their physical proximity or whether I'm searching specifically uh, with a key, uh, a geo keyword like roofers in Dallas, even though I'm not in Dallas, it would trigger that ad because I'm showing interest. Third, the customer fills in details about the job. So if they just search HVAC and local service ads comes up, the consumer has the opportunity to choose which actual job do they want. Do they need AC maintenance or do they need to install ducts and vents or do they need repair? They're able to enter it and then check and make sure that their zip code is serviced uh, by those pros. And obviously the results would change depending upon the zip code they enter and if a pro is available in that area. And then when a pro is selected, when an ad is selected, they can browse the business profile to learn more details and see reviews, right? So this is the basic setup, an overview, there are some highlights, and then pulling in these Google reviews. Because Google has taken that information that reviews are very important uh, in terms of a consumer journey and consumer path in order validating the work that a professional does and making sure that the consumer has that information readily available makes them more likely to convert prior to them picking up the call, picking up the phone, not picking up the call, excuse me. So more options for a customer to find a pro. You can call, like I said, click to call from our mobile device, boom, seamless, right? No extra steps, just call, click the icon, it connects the phone call. They can go, if they're on a desktop, they can write the number down, that number is tracked and they can call that pro directly. That phone number then forwards to whatever your actual number is. The pro responds with a quote or a message asking for more details and then the customer can book the job and subsequently the pro can book the job. It's literally six steps, it's that easy. How does local services by Google differ from ads, that is Google ads? One, there's an application verification process. And Google Ads, for those of you who currently have it, you already know this. And for those of you who don't have a Google Ads account, a um, little bit of information here, you can go to Google Ads, sign in, sign up. You can literally create a campaign, put an ad group together, throw in keywords, create an ad, put in your billing information, and you're off and running. Your ad could trigger. With local services, there is application and verification, primarily because you're going to have that Uh, Google Guarantee Badge. Google needs to make sure to vet the pros that are coming through this program. It's not necessarily a stringent or arduous process, but it's something that is necessary in order to give that consumer that confidence, that trust that these pros have been vetted by Google. CPL versus CPC. That might even be too, too jargony. CPL cost per lead versus cost per click. You're paying for leads. You're not paying for clicks. And it is as clear as that and as plain as that. And Google has taken the feedback from business owners that they want to pay for for leads and demystify, right? Crack the code around what traditional Google ads is or what it has been in terms of 
keyword bidding, creating ads, and the way that you structure the account and simplify that. Again, simplify and connect, simplify and connect. Ads shown based on location, reviews, and responsiveness. Those are not necessarily uh, the components when Google Ads is considered. These are the factors that go into rank and lead distribution on local services. Reviews, that's gonna be big. Responsiveness is gonna be big, right? How quickly you're responding to the leads that you get. It is an ongoing rollout available in select geos for select verticals. It's also available on Google Assistant. And what that looks like is you can see this phone here and somebody has opened the Google Assistant. You can tell by the uh, blue, red, green, and yellow dots. And essentially, someone is using the voice function to ask for a list of professionals of which the phone connects them with it. And again, it's going through here. I need a plumber. It's thinking. It's asking what the common issues are. The person responds, the drain is clogged. It confirms the address. They are able to get a list. You can see the scroll. You can see the Google guarantee. They select and then they provide that information and seamless. Again, hands-free help, frictionless, simplifying and connecting consumers with ease, right? Now, in terms of those verticals that local service ads are in, they're live in over 30 markets. Many more are planned. There are three, excuse me, not three, five. There are five core verticals though. HVAC, which includes heating and cooling, plumbing, electrician, garage doors, and locksmith. These are live in all of the 30 markets, uh, as well as the markets that are planned to come out. If you have questions specific to markets, make sure to contact or connect with Surefire Local. We can talk you through what's coming down the pipeline as we're Google Premier Partners and we get early access to onboard. In terms of expansion plans, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a fixed cost per lead. Price varies on vertical and region. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt as we move through these expansion plans. Uh, they are rolling out again first to their core and then to expansion markets are appliance repair, carpet cleaning, house cleaning, junk removal, moving, pest control, roofing, tree service, water damage restoration, window cleaning, window repair. And there are a few non-home uh, services related verticals that they are exploring in terms of potentially moving into. Again, if you have more questions specific to that, I'm sure you can reach out to us and we can set up a time to talk to you guys because it's a, lo it's a long list. This thing is rolling out in mass uh, and we want to make sure that you're informed but I don't want to use all the time that we have today to, to walk through those. I think the most important part of local service ads and why it's kind of a no-brainer for home service professionals is that the pricing is fixed and it's simple, right? A fixed cost per lead, what costs money? Any message lead. Now, not all verticals have the ability to message a, a business. Some of them do. If your vertical has the ability to message, then that would be something. If someone decides to shoot you a form fill or a text, you would be charged for that. A call that is a connection with the customer, a, a real call, a voicemail with the needed info, they left their contact info, um, and a missed call that is returned to the client. That all you would be charged for under whatever the CPL for your vertical is. What doesn't cost money? When they view your profile, uh, when they look at your information, none of that costs money. Uh, when they click on your ad, that doesn't cost money. Any impressions that might uh, accrue, clicks to your website from the profile, calls that are not customers or returned, spam calls, anything like that. None of that costs you money. In fact, you would see that in a dashboard that says leads not charged uh, because uh, they're reviewing them and they will automatically discredit those that don't meet the criteria. Additionally, if they have charged you for a lead and you say, nope, this is not a valid lead for whatever reason, you can dispute that. There is a functionality to dispute the leads. Even better, and probably one of the most, the question that I get asked the most is, well, what does that CPL actually look like? What is the price that I would be paying per lead? And for that, I would say, what does the legal drinking age 
uh, have in common with CPL, $21. That is the average cost per lead. Now, keep in mind that varies per market per vertical. So this number might fluctuate. However, I have not seen it vary greatly from this. And for some of those industries, for some of those particular verticals, uh, like roofing and windows and garage doors, even at an average price of $21 uh, per lead, that's some of the lowest lead pricing. And again, simplified because you understand that you're only paying whatever the fixed price per lead is. So if you have budget allocation and you're allocating X amount of budget, this is how many leads you can expect to get with that budget. Next most uh, populous question that I get is how do I get started? It's really simple. Uh, step one, choose your vertical or verticals, choose your market markets, make sure that all of that aligns, that those verticals are available in those markets. Submit your business info, complete your background checks. Next, get approved. After Google vets your application, they will give you an approval or they will ask for more information if they need it, but eventually all striving towards a path to get approved. You'll need to get a verified review on your new local service ads review link. Uh, again, that's part of the verification process to prove that you are, your business is who you say your business is. You set your budget. It's a weekly budget, but again, it's easy to work backwards because you'll know what the cost per lead is. And then review your settings. Make sure that you have all of the job types enabled that you want to get leads for and make sure the job types that you don't want to get leads for, you have turned off. As a classic example, I have uh, helped uh, several HVAC clients get on board it with local service ads. And a lot of them um, initially say, oh, I want I want leads for everything. And then I run through the list of all the job types that fall under the HVAC vertical. And two of them are cleaning options, at which point most HVAC uh, companies, at least the ones that I've worked for, said, actually, no, we don't do uh, the cleaning portion of it. Go ahead and turn those off. So again, review those kind of carefully and strategize about what makes the most sense. One, with either the current uh, crew that you have, with the volume of uh, lead that you can handle, um, and what makes sense within your, your budget. Last step to getting started with local service ads is to actually start the ads. Turn it on. Book leads request new reviews. It's important. Remember, reviews and responsiveness, those are very important when it comes to local service ads. And after that, you're all set. I'm going to take a pause right here to see if there are any questions specific to LSA and turn it over to Michelle so I can grab a swig of Mountain Dew. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Carrie. All right. So we're about to launch a poll where you can select to have a private one-on-one -on -one call with one of our digital marketing experts, where they will give you an inside look to the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud and can show you three to four tactics that our current customers are using to win online. Um, let us know if either Friday tomorrow or Tuesday of next week works. The poll is now open for you to pick a time. If neither of those days work for you, just select, please email me to pick a time and we will help pick out a time that best works for you. Um, and if you're already a current customer, you can reach out to your coach and they will be able to help further, help you further if you have any additional questions. Also, if you have any specific questions to LSAs, please share them in the chat box for Carrie. Um, and we did have one question that came through from Michael B. Um, and he wants to know if you can go over the expansion plans again, and he wants to know if those verticals go through Google. Carrie? I apologize. I accidentally oh, hit the okay. button. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't ignoring you. I had actually launched into my response and realized that I accidentally pushed my mute. Classic technology, <laughs> huh? Uh, but it, it, so local service ads has started as a pilot uh, about two years ago. And since then, Google has put a lot of work into expanding it. Right now, what is open? are 30 uh, defined markets, the larger markets like Dallas, Philly, DC, uh, Seattle, San Diego, but there are 30 of them. And honestly, I don't think it's a good use of time to, to run them down right now, as well as from the last um, document that I saw, there are a projected uh, additional 65 to 85 markets that the core um, verticals are rolling into. Again, the core verticals are those five. Uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, garage door, and locksmith. So those are already, you can, if you fall in that category, you can already onboard if you're in the, one of the core 30 um, markets. Uh, if not, again, I would recommend linking up with someone at Surefire Local to talk through, well, 
our our local service ads available in my area? Um, if they're not available, when are they going to become available? And also, one of the benefits of working with someone like Surefire Local, as we're a Google Premier Partner, we have a specific strategic relationship with Google. One on Google Ads, and two on local service ads. We have dedicated reps. We have early access to onboard. So even if a vertical is slated to launch in a market in December, we have even if we're talking to you now in September, we have the ability to walk you through that process and get you through the verification so that you're literally first in line when your market goes live. Um, so one of the benefits you don't have to wait for it to well i mean you still have to wait for it to open in your market to get leads but you can go through the verification process now and get that out of the way while other pros in your area might will have to wait until the actual market opens up to go through the application and you can be there first in line awesome thank you um cool so we will close up the poll now and Thank you for everyone else who has sent in their questions, but we will be sure to answer those at the end after our next poll. Um, yeah. So Carrie, you can take it back. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. And I made sure this time that I was that I didn't press the mute button so that we didn't have that awkward pause. Um, switching gears, not not completely. It's not a complete pivot, but it's talking about again expansion what you can do, other options as a small business owner to leverage uh, to benefit you, especially if you're looking for lead generation. And I wanna talk about Google Ads. Uh, essentially, Google Ads with the name change and with the design change and with some of the new uh, functionality that's coming out in Google Ads, it's really designed to help small businesses do more. Uh, essentially, when I first heard of local service product, and I'm, I'm gonna speak honestly and, and openly, because I, I feel like there's no way to avoid this. With local service ads, I hear people asking, well, why should I keep or even consider starting with Google ad, right? In addition to local service ad. And to be honest, I was in the same boat when I first found out about them. However, there are some things to consider with local service ads. As great as they sound, you know, cost per lead, you're paying per lead, you're not paying, you know, no CPC, you don't have to figure that out. It's still a new product. It's still in its infancy, right? It's still rolling out in that vein. It's being refined. And there are things that Google still has to figure out. So the ads, the platform, it's constantly improving, constantly evolving, constantly changing. Ads has been around, Google ads specifically, formerly AdWords has been around for 18 years, right? It's a tested and true product. People are, as from a consumer standpoint, people are used to seeing it. Uh, secondly, since it's new to consumer, since it's new to consumers, they're adjusting to seeing it in the market, right? It's a new ad type, even with the Google Guarantee Badge. They're, each market I have seen that they've gone into, even depending upon the vertical, there are different rates of adoption and responsiveness. Uh, eventually, obviously, consumers do interact with it, but anything new, people tend to be apprehensive of, and that holds true for consumers. Third, LSAs are in metro areas only. What about the suburbs? There's a lot of space in the continental United States. Uh, and a lot of that space isn't concentrated around metro markets. There are there are areas that LSAs can't reach. And in that vein, Google Ads is a great uh, place to be. That is where you want to be in order to advertise for people who utilize Google for looking for your service. I am a firm believer that local service ads is going to help distinguish the customer journey, which can take a lot of chaotic turns, right? It's going to help define the rings in the sales funnel for those that are closest to purchase and sale. And it's going to do what Google does best, which is simplify and connect. It's going to strive to be that perfect engine where when you enter what you enter, the search engine is going to be able to return exactly what you need. However, you know, like I said before, consumers seldom, if ever, go from deciding that they need to do something or to get something done to the next step automatically doing it, right? Typically, there are many steps a consumer takes uh, on numerous devices across multiple days and weeks on various websites, right? That's the consumer journey nowadays. I'm sure you guys have seen, you know, iconographics about it or images about it, or even thought about it yourself as a consumer or as a business owner, you talk to a client who ended up, you know, purchasing your product or service and their path to you is not always from point A to point B. As a business owner, you wanna make sure you're aware it's simple for the consumer to get to you and you're giving the consumer the information they need to help them with their journey. So essentially, what can
can you do to make sure you're maximizing your share of space, right? You want to consider a few things. And like I said, since local service ads aren't everywhere and consumers, this is a new product, you want to make sure that you're taking every opportunity available to you. Ways that you can do that is leveraging things that exist today. For those of you who have Google Ads accounts, formerly Google AdWords, let me tell you, as a person who spent a decade working in Google AdWords, it is very interesting to remind myself to always say Google Ads because I want to say Google AdWords, but I also want to be on brand and make sure that I'm representing it correctly. So for those of you that don't have Google Ads accounts, and for those of you that do, you may have heard of this, expanded text ads. They were uh, designed to maximize a business's presence in the search results. It granted folks nearly 50% greater ad copy. There had not been an update to Google Ads, again, formerly AdWords, since its inception um, when expanded text ads were rolled out in 2016. Now, I like this visual, the before and after. It kind of gives you an idea of the robustness, but I like, I'm a more, more of a visual person. So I want to talk about what that really looks like from a visual aspect. So you can see in, in this slide here, from 2000 to 2016, that was the ad that would display on the Google search result page. That's the ad, if you are running a Google AdWords campaign on the search network, that is the type of ad you could run. A single headline that had a URL and one description after it, that's the green line. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't said description, and one URL vanity after it, that's the green line. And then two lines of descriptive text under it. That was for 16 years. And then they unveiled expanded text ads, which is what you see in 2016 to 2018, where they expanded, giving the advertiser 50% more space two headlines they gave us the ability to have two pathways behind the url and then consolidated to a single description line but increase the character count that we had there well currently and i mean currently as within the last month they've rolled out an even bigger update to expanded text ads where you can now have three headlines you still have the two pathways right here we go up to three. Headline length is still 30 characters. The domain is still taken from your ad's final URL. The field paths are the same. They're 15 characters. Instead of one description though, you have up to two, char two descriptions. And instead of 80 characters, you have 90 characters, creating almost, again, a 50% increase, right? From 170 characters, if you filled out every character, in the expanded text ad to the improved expanded search ads that have up to 300 characters of space. The takeaway here is you want to take up space. Your relevancy will be rewarded. And if you've been on a, on a webinar with me previously, you know I've, I've said that before, more space gives you the chance to make sure that you're serving a relevant ad to whatever that user is looking for, right? It's helping you position yourself specific to your user, specific to their needs, specific to their query, specific to what they're looking for. Google, with all of its data and algorithms, is trying to find the best searches that prove to be lead generation. But for the sake of argument, put your consumer hat on again, right? Take the business hat off and think about how we talk in text just with with each other or even when we're trying to look for something from Google. Like I've said before, I've been in this for a decade. One of my favorite reports to look at is the search term reports. If you have a Google Ads account um, or if you still call it Google AdWords, if you have a Google AdWords account, go into your account, look at your keywords, click the search term report. That search term report shows you the raw data, what people actually entered into the Google search box, right? I was once looking at an account and the raw search that someone had specifically entered into Google was, please just show me the number to a chiropractor. That's what they searched. Now it's hard to predict for that as an advertiser. It's hard to predict for that as a specialist who crafts ads and architects campaigns. You know, but in its truest sense, the way that we search for things are so unique to an individual. Um, think about how we shorthand or omit words or drop letters, right? Furthermore, 
with the rise of voice search, thanks to our mobile devices and things like Google Assistant, like I was showing you with the LSAs, um, as well as smart home speakers. I don't know about you guys, but I know I have a, a Google Home in my house. Um, the way we speak is a factor in the way that, that we search these search queries, the search terms. Now, couple that with the undeniable data that there are over 100 billion searches per month on Google, right? And 15% of those daily queries we've never seen before, right? So it's a number of keywords combinations that have never been searched before on Google. The point is users are searching more than ever, their needs are ever evolving, and the way that they search for them is constantly changing and is indicative and can be indicative of where they're at in the lead funnel. And Google ads as an umbrella, both local service ads and expanded text ads has the, the ability to showcase you and highlight you and connect you simply with the consumers when they need it, when it's convenient for them. So it's marrying your need for lead generation as well as the need for consumers to have a simple interaction and gather the appropriate data that they need. Google understands this and they've gone one step further. It's not just the update with expanded text ads, they're also experimenting, this is in beta right now, with what's called responsive ads for search. This takes the expanded text ads or the expanded search ads one step further, right? Responsive ads automatically test different combinations of headlines and descriptions and learn which combinations perform best. Over time, responsive search ads will serve the best message to different searchers, depending on the keywords they search, their query, for their device, their past browsing history, and other signals, right? So you can put in up to 15 different headlines. You can put in up to four different descriptions, 90 characters a piece, the headlines are 30 characters a piece. You see in the middle, Google machine learning technology, using all of these signals, seamlessly behind the scenes, it will choose the right combination for that particular consumer where they are based on their past browsing history and other signals and present the best ad that it can make specific to them, helping you again clearly and easily position your business to the right consumer at the right time, fulfilling their right need. That's that's the, the ease of it. That's the point of it right? Reducing that friction, simplifying it and connecting folks, both consumers and businesses, and making sure that both parties are getting what they need out of Google. So rounding this out here, I have four surefire tips for myself from Carrie. Number one, take up space. It's there. I don't know if you guys recognize that little guy. Uh, that was uh, the Tesla car that was sent into space. And I forget the name of the experiment. If you know, put it in the comment section. I forgot the name of it. But what I mean when I say take up space, be where the consumer feels comfortable, right? And where they're looking, whether that's on local service ads, whether that's in Google ads, whether that's Google My Business, whether it's organic. And regardless of whatever you choose, now I can only speak to two of them as my area of expertise, local service ads and Google ads, use all of the advantages. Those two updates, the responsive ads for search and the expanded, the new and improved expanded text ads or expanded search ads, those are huge. That gives you a chance to make yourself relevant, to be seen. And that's even before we talk about site links, uh, which I'm not gonna get into. That's another webinar for another day, but take up that space. Google's giving it to you in order to make sure that the consumer has a more seamless journey when they're looking for something and or when they're looking for you. Second, success is an illusion if you can't measure it. So in talking about LSAs, local service ads, it's critical that you understand the ranking factors that go into it and that you're understanding how you're being charged and what's considered the lead, right? As far as local service ads go, when you become a pr approved contractor, an approved pro, you wanna make sure that you're responding to your leads and that you're dispositioning the leads correctly. Right? With Google Ads, you want to make sure that you have con conversion tracking set up. I didn't get a chance to touch, touch on this much. In other webinars I have in the past, and maybe in the future, I'll spend some time on it. However, with conversion tracking, if your goal is lead generation, if you don't have or can't articulate the conversion tracking that you have set up, how are you sure that you're measuring it? How are you sure that you're getting out of it what you put into it? With local service ads, it's going to be pretty easy because it's all set up in the advertiser dashboard where you can see your leads come in and you should have a clear understanding. 
but it's good to have that clear understanding with Google Ads. In fact, not just good, it's mandatory that you have it, even with Google Ads. Third, you should be consumer focused, but lead driven. This is part of what Google has done so well. Consumers take different paths. You still have the same goal. That doesn't vary. Put your consumer hat on when you're in Google Ads or whether you're working on your LSA account. You need to translate what your business does into what consumers think they need. They're not experts in roofers. They're not HVAC technicians. They don't know how to install siding. They don't know how to clean their gutters. They don't know how to repair their gutters. They don't know that. What they know is they're a homeowner who has a need because they have, you know, a hole in their roof or, you know, they have some other problem. So translate what your business does, what your services are to what the homeowner needs because they're not experts. And then the iterate part comes in. Make sure that you're constantly testing what you have. Or if you have someone managing your ads or your accounts, make sure that they're testing. You want to stay fresh. You want to make sure that you're using the best data. You want to make sure that you have the best combinations of ads and keywords out there that are meeting your goal. But again, how do you make sure you have, you're meeting your goal if you don't have conversion tracking set up? So that is fundamentally important as well. Last, relevancy is rewarded. Another thing that I've often repeated in other uh, webinars that I've done, but when it comes to LSAs, responsiveness and reviews. Previously, reviews had not been a factor uh, really with um, advertising with Google Ads, previously Google AdWords. However, they will become a factor. So again, making sure that you get those in, it's going to be critical for you. Three, context. That, uh, that goes for local service ads and Google Ads, right? Using up that extra space, making sure that you are very specific in you know what repair that you do or what service you provide, why you're the expert in your area, what your unique ad positioning is, why a client should choose you over one of your competitors. Use all of that to your benefit and how you'll be rewarded, at least when it comes to Google Ads, lower cost per click, higher ad positioning, and ultimately that trickles down into better conversion rates. When it comes to local service ads, you'll see better positioning, you'll see better responsiveness, you'll see uh, lead quality, lead volume, um, increase. Now, I wish I had more time to talk you through a whole lot more, but understand as a small business, this is an exciting time to leverage the options available to you on Google ads, both under local service ads and the updates that it's done to its Google ads platform itself. I hope you found this informative and I hope if you guys have any questions with the remaining time we have left, now's the time to ask them. I'm happy to answer anything you might have. With that, I'm going to turn that back over to Michelle. Thank you so much, Carrie. So before we get into the Q&A and the Google Display winner, we want to ask again if you would like a one-on-one call with a Surefire team member to see a demo of the Surefire Cloud on either Friday or Tuesday of next week. Well, Friday, tomorrow, Tuesday of next week. Um, The poll is now open for you to pick a time. Just like, please email me to pick a time if tomorrow or Tuesday does not work for you. Um, This is a great opportunity for you to see how partnering with a digital marketing company can make a huge improvement in your marketing effort. So while you're taking a second to do that, um, we will get into some of the questions. Um, So Sue wants to know, what's the most important information you need to include in your ad? Carrie, did you hit mute again? (laughs) How'd you know? Oh my goodness. (laughs) You absolutely called that one. Um, What do you need to, uh, what's the most important information you need to include? Um, Just be authentically yourself state your ad your unique ad position um you have to speak to the consumer speak in plain language don't use jargon um again reiterate with them why you're the right company for this particular product or service whatever it is that you're advertising um and make sure that the ad speaks to whatever the query is. And and that comes in with campaign architecture. You know, don't have your kitchen keywords in with your bathroom keywords uh, because you wanna serve a specific kitchen ad to the people who search kitchen keywords. And you wanna serve a specific bathroom ad to those who search bathroom. The same goes with like roofing and guttering. Have two different ad groups and, and have each ad speak specifically to that. And stick to what your unique value proposition is in your market and speak plainly. 
Um, outside of that, there's no, you know, I wish I could give you a, a, a foolproof, like absolutely include this information, but I found that those ads that I've crafted that kind of hit on all three cylinders, those are the ones that perform the best. Great. Um, the next question we have is from Mark. What is a reasonable monthly budget for ads? Uh, for Google ads, that depends on the size of the geographic area you're trying to cover. Uh, again, with Google ads, you can cover on all of the United States if you want it to uh, versus LSAs that are only in specific markets or metro areas. Um, here at Surefire Local, we typically recommend $1,000 per month per market per vertical. That allows you to gather a good quantity of data to optimize against for your unique positioning, for your market, how competitive it is, um, and to make actionable optimizations based on the data that comes in. Um, I have seen clients that have been successful uh, with obviously more. I have not really seen clients be successful uh, with less, uh, but again, you have to start somewhere and get data and understand and interpret that data in order to really maximize your investment. All right. Um, the next one we have here is from Kurt. He says, are local service ads available for all business sectors? For example, self-storage. Not yet. So the ones that I listed today, those are rolling out. Um, there are some that are not home services, uh, like tutoring. That's an example. That's something that uh, they're going after. I don't believe I've seen anything on self-storage. However, these local service ads, they're not slowing down. Google is actually accelerating um, how they're getting them to market. And they have an entire production team dedicated to looking at new verticals for them to expand into. So it would not surprise me that if self-storage is not one there right now that in the future it very well could be but again that's part of the reason keeping close contact with a partner like surefire local before it's available to the public we get that information about what type of verticals and what markets they're going to be rolling into um so we're keeping tabs you know a connection with someone like us a premier partner it would give you a bit of a heads up when it's going to come into your your area or if it's coming into your market. All right. And then we have another question from Ron. Um, are LSAs still not available in Canada? So I have seen some uh, feedback that LSAs are available in Canada. Um, to, I don't want to quote incorrectly, uh, but the last document that I had seen is that they are rolling uh, out. Uh, I, again, I would recommend speaking with someone specific to what vertical you're looking at and what area of Canada. I know Canada is quite expansive um, and there are several metros, uh, metro markets in Canada that they may be expanding into. Um, so talk to someone, you know, set up a game plan, let you know if, if they're coming into that particular area of Canada or if they're coming into that particular service. Great. All right. Um, we'll do one more question and then we'll get into the Google Home Display winner. So John wants to know, where do you incorporate ads so they can show up in a search? So um, you can either choose to advertise on local service ads. Those are the three little boxes that show up at the top of the search engine results page. Uh, and that's done through you know, working through a partner like Surefire Local or someone um, to go through the application process, get through the verification process, set up your local service ads dashboard and have a training on how to disposition leads and respond to them and request reviews. Um, if you're looking for Google Ads itself, um, it, it is literally as easy as going to, you know, ads.google.com, creating an account so you can log in, create a campaign, set your budget, set your targeting, into your billing details, create an ad group, create some keywords and create an ad. Now it is as simple as that to get up and running. However, there should be strategy employed when you're trying to market and use ads, Google ads specifically to use like expanded text ads um, because you wanna make sure that you're driving leads. Um, and in order to do that, you have to be um, mindful of relevancy. You have to make sure that um, you're essentially fishing in the right stream. Um, and that can be a little more daunting for small business owners um, because it is a bit of work. But there are um, it, ads 
formerly Google AdWords was meant as a self-service platform. Uh, but because it's it's grown and because there are so many, there's so much more functionality, um, being able to either have someone house in-house who manages it, who has the technical skill, or again, partnering with someone like Surefire Local so that folks like myself who have been doing it for 10 plus years can manage your campaigns um, and then you know, partnering, leveraging your expertise in whatever your field is uh, with our expertise in search and marketing, those make for the best types of campaigns. But essentially, that's how you get to advertise. It's as, as simple as going to ad.google.com, creating an account and, and starting it. Great. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. And thank you, Carrie, for your answers. So Absolutely. now we're going to, yeah. So today's lucky recipient of the Google Home Smart Display is Michael Barney. Congratulations, Michael. Woo-hoo. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address and we will ship that right out to you. So huge thanks to Carrie and to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join us. We hope you learned something new and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Please take a minute to fill out the survey at the end and let us know how we did today and what topics you would like to hear about in the future. We love checking those out um, when we plan our webinar schedule. Thanks again and have a great day. Thanks so much, guys.